Hey guys, this is Grizz from Game Replays, and I'm going to be making another map making tutorial for you all. Uh, this one's going to cover everything I covered in the previous tutorial, but in more detail, um, with the addition of extra features that I think you'll find very, very interesting to use, such as weather, atmosphere, lighting, blah, blah, blah. Um, you'll see them later on, and hopefully you'll be able to make more of us maps from the word go. So let's get making a map. So go to your Dawn War Route 2 root folder and open up World Builder. And go to the top, select file, new, and the dimensions will come up. And I'm going to set my map dimensions to 320 by 320 for terrain size. Uh, playable area to 288 by 288. I'm going to set the height to 100 meters. I'll explain all that later on. Um, don't need to worry about it at the moment. Uh, I do suggest, though, that you realize how big your map is going to be before you create it. Have a rough idea. Because once you click this OK button, that's it. You can change the dimensions of your map. Um, height isn't so important, but the actual playable area, if you remember that, then you're going to be very gutted because you can't change it once the map has been created. So if you spent 100 hours in your map and you need that little bit extra room, I'm sorry, but you're going to be very, very disappointed and cry yourself to sleep. So anyway, this is your basic map. and. Um, you can rotate around, hold down the Alt key and use the mouse. You can rotate around like I'm doing. Uh, press the backspace key and it resets your view. Um, you can pan by holding down the mouse wheel, like so, or by using the arrow keys. Very simple ways to navigate around your map. Um, first thing that you might want to do, as I'll quickly show you, if you zoom out by rotating the mouse wheel, you'll notice that the fog obscures your point of uh, view on the map. So you want to turn that off by clicking this toggle button at the top. Click that and the fog goes away. You click it again and the fog will come back. So if you're trying to do aesthetical uh, improvements to your map later on, you can see the fog and how it affects your map. But I'll come into that later when I talk about fog and what height you can set it as and its density, blah, 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 more advanced features. So anyway, this is your map. Um, first thing you're going to want to do is put down a couple of player starting points. So click on the object placement over here. Um, this will bring up a menu and other buttons on the right-hand side. So click on... Uh, EBPS in objects, uh, click on world objects, click on gameplay and scroll down to starting position PVP menu and this will allow you if you right click on the map to place several objects on it which count as the starting players HQ. You can rotate them like I'm doing now by holding down the shift button and then clicking on the object and then dragging in the direction and it will rotate for you. Just make sure they're facing each other. There we go, couple of HQs. And uh, what you're going to want to do then is select one of them, like so. Then over here on current, you're going to have to want to select player assignment to player one, and select the other one to player assignment player two. And there you go. You've got a working 1v1 map now. Um, for ease, you might want to go up to the top and click the toggle button for player ownership colouring. That will colour the player one blue, player two red. It will colour other players if you made a 2v2 map like green, yellow, purple, blah blah blah, just to show you which objects belong to which players. Um, another quick thing you can do is just slap down a couple of turrets, like so, assign them to player 2, and then a couple on the other side. Uh, rotate them with the shift key, like I did for the HQ, towards the other person's HQ. There we go. And Just select everything and assign it to player 1. And there you go, those are the turrets that defend the base. Let's move that back a bit. There we go. If you click this button, it will get rid of any splats that you don't want on the field. Um, very, very useful uh, if you misplace something. Um, not useful <laughs> if you uh, have loads of splats already placed on the field, as it will completely remove them. So anyway, move the target slide to the side. There we go. Um, so there we go, basic 1v1 map. Here you could play this, it would be pretty boring. Um, you certainly wouldn't get to tier 2 in a hurry, especially with the recent changes. So let's change that by putting down some powerpoints. So scroll up in this menu on the right and go to starting, uh, go to strategic point PVP. These are powerpoints, so slap a couple of those down either side. Uh, get some requisition points as well. Um, just slap one of those in each corner. Why not? And also we'll get a victory point so we don't have to play Annihilate on this map and just put that in the middle of the map. And there we go, it's effectively ready to go if you want a pretty boring game. So let's make it a bit more interesting by adding some cover for our troops as they advance towards the victory point. So scroll up, deselect gameplay to keep it tidy. Go to 
military objects, then defences, and then select sandbag wall, and then you can simply plop it down on the map, rotate it as you've done with the other options. You can rotate it manually, or if you look up here in the top right corner, you have an option on this list called Use Random Rotation. If you click that, it will automatically rotate the objects as you place them down on the map for you. Um, great for doing individual objects splattered all over the place if you don't have time to rotate them yourself, or if you can't be bothered, or if you want, um, but if you want more uh, customizable uh, rotation, you're going to have to do it yourself with the shift button and do objects individually. There we go. Let's give the other player some sunbags. Just turn that off in the meantime. There we go, I think that'll about do for sandbags. Um, we'll get some other objects as well, such as barbed wire. Just slap one of those down. I'll turn on the random rotation because I don't really care about the direction of this barbed wire that much. That'll do. There we go. Fantastic, looking better already. Um, let's see what else so they have. Dragon's teeth, just slap a couple of those down. Uh, put another one over there, that'll do. A couple of tank traps, just to protect the sandbags from <laughs> if there were any tanks. Um, let's put a couple of bags, oh, sandbag uh, piles around just to illustrate the fact that they have just recently put up these defences and haven't completed them yet. Um, there we go, I'll show you a couple more. Um, you can get buildings as well, um, such as a guard tower, so we'll put a guard tower on this side of the map, just to put it uh, rotate it so we find the door. There it is. And just put it towards that player HQ. We'll put one over here as well. And there's the door, so we'll place it there for that player. Um, we'll get a bunker and we'll just slap it down there. Get another bunker the other side. There we go. Just a couple of buildings to spice up the map. Um, now would be a good point to learn this up here. If you look where I'm pointing, the cover and shot blocking toggle button, you click that and all the objects that have uh, the attribute apl applying to them show you what they do. For instance, this barbed wire has got a green box around it to indicate that it doesn't shot block, um, which means people over here can shoot at people over here, but it does provide medium cover as illustrated by this yellow triangle in the corner. These sandbags, for example, have a green triangle in the corner, so they have a heavy cover, whereas the buildings have a blue mesh around them, a blue wire mesh around them, which illustrates that people over here cannot shoot people over here, they actually sh uh, block shots. So the majority of buildings have that, whereas the majority of normal objects such as this just have the um, cover. There are other objects which I'll, uh, if you can see on this tank drive, I'll bring out for you. Um, ignore the green box around it for the meantime, but you notice a light grey faint box around it. Um, some objects just have that, which illustrate, which just um, mean that they don't have any cover properties and they don't drop blocks, so they're just there to get in the way, basically. Um, I'll find a couple of other objects for you. Uh, if you go to industrial objects, cargo, you can put down these exploding barrels, which I know everyone loves so much. You can also have the burning ones, which the animation uh, already exists in the uh, map building process, so you can see kind of what your map will look like at the end. Um, with animation and all that. So let's have a couple of those down. There we go, very nice. Yeah, About three barrels, slap those down. Get some cargo crates, more like cover. Get some single cargo crates, yeah, very good. Um, get bigger objects such as cargo containers, just slap a couple of those around the map to uh, mean that people can't just wander wherever they like. There we go, very pretty. Um, let's go military objects, uh, supplies. You can also get well, like ammo cases and stuff like that. You really, there's so many objects you have to just play around with it and see what they've got. There's literally thousands of them. So I've only mentioned about I don't know ten at most here. So you're going to have to go through them and have a butcher's because it's a absolutely fantastic the range they have. Um, the amount you don't haven't even seen before as well, and uh, the amount you can put down. For example, you can uh, select Imperial Guard squad members and put them down on the field and assign them to player controlling uh, a player control. So player one can start with a squad of Imperial Guard if you so you wanted, but I won't show you how to do that. You can go find it out for yourself. 
Um, what else should I put down? I'll put down a couple of bits of rubble just around the place. And a couple of broken pipes. There you go. Very pretty. I can't wait to play this. Um, yeah, it's just got some twisted metal. Just have it over there. So anyway, that's basically it for objects. There's nothing more to it. Um, you'll run into more issues. I'll run into more issues later with uh, fiddly bits like when you want to put objects on a certain height and you've got a lumpy terrain. And um, if you have like grates covering a chasm and you uh, want to put objects on the grates, you have to mess around with adjustable and relative terrain uh, tick boxes up here. It's very, very fussy and you'll learn easy ways of how to do it, but I'll have to run that through. It took me a while to get that figured. But um, anyway, I'll quickly run over texturing now, as I have done in a previous tutorial. Uh, go up here and click on Texture Tile Painting Editor. And if you scroll up here, you can see uh, the basic um, textures that have been used for your map. For example, you've got a ground texture and a cliff texture. Cliff texture is not used yet because we don't have any cliffs, but I'll run into that when I use this height map editor later on in the tutorial. Um, so let's assign a new layer. So you click on one that's unused, scroll down, um, and let's get one of these. For example, let's have some a metal texture and assign that layer. It will come out of an error, but it doesn't matter. It did work. It has applied to that layer. Don't worry. Um, let's if you scroll up here, you'll find another brush tool. You can reduce it and feather it a bit. And let's just place some, for example, place some underneath objects that look like they've had got some foundation to them, and uh, haven't just been placed there willy nilly. There we go. Much better. Let's do it very quickly. Do it for five as well. Just bring emphasis on it. Um, there we go, that'll do. I don't care, I do care about this building. Might as well be consistent. Um, let's get another layer just for another example for you. It's like the redstone. Let's on that, and let's say that we want that to be the eye drawing uh, centre of the map. So you place that under the VP, and uh, you can place it under other requisition points as well. And power points just do. They look really ghastly actually, but. Leave it as it is, just so you can get an idea. Um, that'll do for that. Let's get another texture, and let's get a a dirt. Let's get a dirty rubble. Assign that, and we'll just basically increase the brush size. And on this map, it can be used as a kind of road to the center point, and also a road to this guy's HQ over here. Very nice. Nothing pretty, just showing you the basics of map building. Leave some bits of sand just to indicate that people have been walking all over it and haven't cleaned their bully boots. There we go. Absolutely amazing. Very, very good. So there's lots of colour coming to the map already. Um, I'll quickly go over grass for you, as it's something very quick and easy to do. Um, basically, you get a brush size here, nothing you hold on left click, nothing gets put down. You have to go over here, select a type of grass, then left click, and I don't know if you can see that, but there is actually grass being placed there. Again, there's a brush size down here, so you can decrease the size of your brush for more accurate placing. Um I'll get rid of that for now. Um some different types of grass have these you can select these options they can be placed. For example, grass yellow doesn't have a burnt state, so you can't left click with that on. You have to have it crushed or normal. And it can be placed fine. Um, if you want to add different types of glass, just click on this cross here, and then you've got a huge list. Uh, for example, I want some moss. So I click OK, and it will appear in this here. Click on that. Um, increase the brush size. Left click, and there we go. Some moss. Um, decrease it a bit, and then just slap it around the containers a bit. Show that being this sometime. Let's get some more grass. Let's get some, get some leaves. And just uh, select the leaves. Nope, some of these don't actually work. That's a good thing that came up in there because some of them are actually empty. So you might be sitting there pulling your hair out, but it's alright, they don't actually exist. Uh, for example, fern small. Nope, also, oh no, it does for normal, not burnt. Uh, you can place down ferns. But um, just be aware of that some of them don't actually exist. So if you spend about 20 minutes holding down the mouse button and trying to grind it into your desk, <laughs> it may be the fact that some of them are invalid file names or something. I don't know what went wrong there. Just put a couple of those down. Uh, 
det som det som det som det som det som det som det cover the pipe in it uh, whatever so that's grass um you can also uh, edit grass height strength feathering brush size down there um it's not very interesting stuff down there you can make really tall grass if you want to do some of that but I'm not going to cover that in the tutorial you can work that out for yourself it's pretty simple um I also cover splats just quickly for you if you click on splat placement up here um basically splats are static images um so for example like craters so if I wanted to place a crater underneath this turret to indicate that it's been built there and ripped up the dirt around it I can do um, once again you can do random rotation as you did with the objects by clicking placement checkbox up here then right clicking and then it automatically rotate them for you as you put them down uh, you can do other ones like swirly tornado rex um, again with the objects there's so many of them you're just going to have to go through and have a have a look and uh, see what you can come up with there's so many different types you you'll be absolutely amazed um uh, let's have that yeah I can go there why not <laughs> just have a couple of those on the map um try and find a different example for you uh was it in there no metal no no uh yeah, gasoline stain, you get different types, so there's an oily stain rather than a um, textured effect on the ground, so you could put that underneath, I don't know, I can go on top of this texture, and it looks pretty decent if you put it underneath barrels and stuff to show they've been leaking, or whatever, so you can create some really impressive stuff with this, um, if you go through all of it and have a have a look. Um, there's meter sticks, and radius if you want to create a map based around math, <laughs> Or if you wanted to be more accurate, for example, there's a uh, a ruler here, so you can measure the distance between stuff. Uh, what else is there? Ah, oh, there's scorch marks. For example, the avatar scorch mark for, um, for example, where he's done his sword. Uh, there's green blobs from where spore mines have exploded. Uh, same with psychic glow, uh, psychic beam glows. Um, more vehicle wrecks. Uh, orbital bombardment's a good one. It looks like there's been a recent attack there or something, and there's still glowing embers underneath the point to uh, indicate that it's recently been blown up or on fire. Um, it's quite good if you place it underneath, like scarred metal and stuff like that. It just looks like it's been recently become a wreck. Um, and that's basically it for um, this first part of the tour that I'm going to put together for you. Uh, there's nothing else I can really tell you now, so I'll. You'll uh, hear me again in a couple of seconds as I continue another different part of the tour, more advanced stuff for you. So I'll see you then and talk about water and height maps. So see you then.